Part 2 Pamper the Masquerade Bloodlight. Oh, no, we're not. We're not moving away. We're staying here in LA. Or downtown LA. To do our mischief. Aww. Well, let's see. Club confession. No, no, we're not going to club confession yet. Later on. Skyline Apartments, as you might remember, we have a quest for that. Emperor Arms. That's another story. I think it's related to the Giovanni. I'm not sure. I can't recall the Giovanni. I don't like them personally. I think they're a shit clan. Personal opinion. Because it's so stupid the way they were made. It's like one Giovanni just ate the anti living of the Cappadocians, and oh my god, that's just so stupid. Uh, yeah, I have a personal grudge against a lot of clans, or the backstory, or the way they were made. But uh, okay, that's fine. Whatever. It's just it's thing that it's things that need to exist in this world to make it more lively, more logical. Even if I don't approve it, though. That's just me. So... <sighs> the last round. So we have to backtrack. We have to backtrack, backtrack, backtrack. Uh, okay. Let's go back. Okay, just walk the street. I'm just gonna go walk the street. Because... We may find something. Oh. This is interesting. These are some very interesting. Um, oh no, gang members! Oh fuck! Or should I? There's a problem here with gang members, and it may be obvious or not, but some of them are sabat. As you can imagine, the Zavat doesn't like us. Or as you might remember, rather not imagine. <sighs> there we go. Okay. So after... Here. Okay, sure. So I should be going over here. Oh, the gas med team. Nice. Nice, nice. nice, nice. That's where the belly story starts. Here. Okay. Ah, uh, wait, what? No, so I have to go this way. I, I wonder where... There's a guy in the street that sells weapons. Oh, there's another... There's other people in Gatlin here. Okay. Opera. The Opera. Ah, uh, I think it's... Okay. Are you... Okay, whatever. Yeah, I think it's here. The last round, the last round. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. Yep, looks like a dive bar alright at Call of Duty. Nice.
Yeah, and there's some. I think it's a valley. Uh, and I keep calling them children of no. It's just a valley. The thing is that the valley can make a plague also that spreads through through kindred. It, it can spread from from kindred to kind, and it it, it, it makes a whole fucking mess. Seen old yeller? May sound cruel, but it's necessary. If someone puts together two and two as to the real cause of an outbreak of bloodborne diseases, guess what happens? So the plague bearer has got to be found and put down. If the Camarilla really gives a damn, they'll help us out. One of our boys' ghouls, name's Paul, lives nearby in the sky in apartments. Been a stranger lately. Looked like death last time he was here. Said he didn't get bit, but maybe you can get more info out of him. Wait, if Paul's not attacking, you might want to start questioning the homeless cop. So many has been dying lately, but it takes the city a few days to pick up the bodies. Ugh. Alright, sure. Whatever, damsel. Ah, uh, okay, here we go. Who's the child for Camarilla Benevolence? What errand does the police have you running to date? None is expected. Have some manners and don't wear out your weapon. I'm still coming. And I'll be the one showing your actions to you. That's what I'm saying. There's this girl who's been making a lot of noise lately. The real pain in the ass. She's a ghoul of this one Toreador creep who disappeared. Her name is Patty. She hangs out. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. She used to show up around that. here and act like she was everybody's best friend. It was all fun and games until her vampire sugar daddy stopped calling. Now she can't get her blood fixed and shit ain't so fun no more. Well, obviously not. She's crossed the line. Only time that mouth ain't blind is when it's sucking vampire blood. She's gotta disappear. Do this, and we'll keep our little secret here. Alright, have fun. I'd love to do this one myself, but I know it's side. Just let me know when it's done. Yeah, right. Right, 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 right. You showed up. Good. Here's what I gotta tell you. And so you know, I don't lecture, I don't rap, I'm no bureaucrat. I'm just a guy out of nowhere came to be involved in something 500 times bigger than you and me. You've got a right to know the score. The Camarilla, this is the short of it. They operate a lot like a pyramid scheme. There's a bunch of these old timers at the top with God only knows what plots in mind. They lose their power, they die. They sired more to carry out their plans. I'm looking for a little power than those kindred sired for their own schemes, and so on and on and on. It hurts my head just thinking about the mess. And it works out to this. Only a few people at the top have any real power. Them's fighting words, Nivy. But you're young and stupid, so I won't make an example of it. See, the Camarilla claims all of us are members, even if we don't want to be. Which is, of course, the biggest little horseshit a man ever heard. Yep. I learned the way of this world during the Depression. A bunch of old rich bastards screwed the country. But did they suffer? No. The little people suffered. You can't trust the people at the top. The world would be a better place without them. All you can do is get a group of people together who aren't assholes. Find a place to put your feet up and make some examples of the quote-unquote elite to keep the rest the hell out. Everyone's an equal here. The same thing this country used to be about. That's what LA has been. An anar free state. Which is basically the reason why there's um why there's so many kindred um so many kindred why there are so many um I'm gonna I wanna say unsired but it's not unsired it's just that they don't know their sires and 
this is a common occurrence after World War II, so says the lore. <clears throat> so, the Anarchs exist because uh, basically they are rebelling against this whole mess that has been happening between Cameroon and Zabad. And it's also related to what happened with, with all the changes that happened after World War II, 50s, 60s, 70s. So, it, it, it kind of mixes up. That's how it's justified in the lore. The Camarilla was kicked out on their ass a long time ago. We, the Anarchs, didn't want to play their politics anymore. Now the Croy and crew pop in like they never left. Uh uh. No goddamn way. Their laws don't apply to us. I got that name right here. <laughs> yeah. The Croy represents everything I hate the Camarilla, stuck up aristocrats, rich businessmen, crooked politicians. The only place the Croy belongs is in the room. And maybe not even there. No such thing. And again, newbie, don't throw those kind of words around like me. You're risking a big cat. I fought to keep LA free since I was embraced. A long time later, I'm one of the only ones left that has a bit of a switch size. And it's a better and sword on without hand. Here's what I tell all the new blood. One, you get careless, that blood will make you into a monster. If you rampage around here, you get put down. Two, don't kill when you feed. No reason to. In this city, there's lots of ways to slake the beast without leaving a trail of dead. Three, the camera yeah. is full of shit. Four, watch your back, always. And lastly, learn how to fight. Because a speech ain't gonna save your ass when you're staring down the barrel of a shotgun. That is very true, Knights. Very, very true. And the Anarchs are also full of shit. The only ones, honestly, that are not full of shit are the Zabat. Because the Zabat praise the... They basically praise Cain. And, and they do strongly believe that that is the reason why the vampires exist. Camarilla doesn't very doesn't believe that that Cain existed. And Beckett, as as was mentioned earlier, he's a historian of sorts, so he collects uh, parts of what's called the Book of Cain and leftovers from it's called the fragments of I don't recall what right now. Uh, so he's basically proven that. Uh, the Kindred have existed since humanity has existed, but it's probably a sickness, and it could potentially be cured, and blah blah blah, whatever. Um, but honestly, I mean, and I'm doing a big spoiler here, this is a bad or right. They are fucking right, and Kane does exist, and he's gonna fuck everything up. And he returns. And he doesn't give a shit about this is a bad, too. If the sort of Kane or Black Hand or the Black Hand or whatever the fuck they're called. It's just, just, if, if you follow the... I'm not gonna say canonic ending, but if you still follow one of the endings, Kane just breaks everything. And there's a huge ass fight that you can go through, and you're probably gonna lose because Kane is just so overpowered because Lilith taught him everything that she knew, and Lilith is basically the mother of. Um. Uh, I'm not gonna say mother of demons, it's just the mother of all creatures. There's there's a name in, in Kabbalah, and I can't recall right now, but she is the one that taught Cain, and that's why Cain has all those disciplines. And basically, in the book, what it says is that Cain can just make up disciplines on the fucking fly if he wants. And that's how that's how he works. And that's a funny story. If you remember, we we broke up the the pictures in the gallery, and. The funny story is that it was supposed to be for the Camarilla, even though Threes or Jeanette or whatever, they're, they're Anarchs and whatnot. Um, I'm not sure the Anarchs believe in King. Probably do. I don't know. Camarilla doesn't, so it, it's kind of strange that the Camarilla were supposed to be seeing this, because it doesn't make sense. Anyway, enough talk. Let's continue. After picking your ass up off the pavement back there, yeah. I can tell you don't even know the basics. Hold your hands up like this. You keep your body at an angle. It makes you harder to hit. Keep your thumbs out of your fist and put your weight into your punches. That's increased? Nice. LA is the school of hard knocks, so keep your friends close and your enemies in a barbecue pit. Once you square things with LaCroix, don't give that son of a bitch the time of night. I got my eye on you, kid. Thank you. Ooh, we got a lot of fun. Attention hard. <laughs> okay. Alrighty then. Sorry. Oh. You're gonna make Chris in the room. 
I like I like that a lot. about the Ankaran sarcophagus. Yeah, well, maybe I should fill you in on the details. That sarcophagus is bad news. Kindred around the globe have been going bad shit since it was discovered. The word is, is there's an ancient asleep in there. One of the fathers, one of the vampires, that if you trace your lineage way back, there's a chance it'd end up with him at the roof. Ancients don't just nap. They sleep whole ages away. And when they wake up, they're hungry. Like Ravnos. Ravnos, the antediluvian of a Ravnos clan. Alright, I don't think it's Ravnos' his name. I can't recall. Uh, but before Gehenna starts, there's a lot of signs that can be seen. One of them was that. Uh, Vampires were having a lot of bad dreams, and the Ravnos clan was having some bad shit going on, and their antediluvian wakes up in India, and basically starts tearing shit up all over the place. Like, there's kindred, fallen, hunters, mages, there's all kinds of shit going to stop Ravnos, or the antediluvian of the Ravnos, and it gets to the point where they have to use a satellite cannon, and I'm not making this shit up. I don't even know how they cover this up. But there's like a huge crater left somewhere in India, in the north part of India, if I recall correctly. Because they're unable to stop him. Like, it, it is actually impossible to stop the antediluvian through normal means. They have to go... Uh, there's the technocracy, which is... I want to say that it's part of the mages section. And they basically have a lot of fucking technology that's super advanced and they just release it with a, like, they just release drops of it from time to time. And what happened is that they had to use this. They had to use this to stop the antediluvian because uh, everyone came to the conclusion that if, if, if they didn't unite, the antediluvian was going to just destroy the world. And, and take note, this is a prelude of what's going to happen if other antediluvians get up. Once the antediluvian dies, the Ravnos go fucking insane because their, their antediluvian has died. And what the lore explains is that you start losing power because you don't have an antediluvian anymore. You lose power, you lose disciplines, you lose a lot of stuff because of that, that particular thing. And this is considered one of the signs of the ends of time, or Gehina, as it is called in Vampire the Masquerade. So the fact that we're bringing this up about the Ankaran sarcophagus is that this could mean some really bad stuff for a kindred in general, and humanity for that matter, because you don't know how fucked up the Antidolubin is gonna go if it wakes up. And not spoiling, I think that probably one of the best um, antediluvians is the Simisi antediluvian. It is way over the fucking top what you have to do to kill the Simisi antediluvian. It's just, it's just fucking insane. And like the background and everything. I mean, if if you don't do it right. The antediluvian will come back, and and, I, and I'm just gonna say it 
because it, it is, well, some explanation. On this sheet that I have, or that you can see when, whenever I'm playing, disciplines go up to level 5. That's usually the highest that it goes normally. Now, if you start going below 13 generation, because I, I believe I'm 13 in this game. 13 or 12, I don't know. When you start sucking another vampires, di diabolizing, you can start going into lower generations. That allows for more beats, more stats, more disciplines, as in more levels, and more disciplines in general, and other stuff. Anyway, what I'm trying to go to, you start getting into what I call the barrier. The barrier of stupidity. Because, and, and I'm gonna say this up front, whenever you go up discipline level 5 or of any discipline, you're a fucking superman. And, and, and I'm gonna give you an example. Um, for level 7, of potence or celerity, I can't recall. It can be the same or it can be either one. I don't I don't care. Or it might be level eight. Again, whatever. There is a, a special I'm gonna I'm gonna call it specialization. I can't recall the name right now. But you get the special skills. With every level. And you have to choose them and you have to train them. Because you just don't get them. Although you could just get them because this one at least it makes sense to me. It's called flicker, so you just flick your fucking finger, and you kill everything that's basically on the path of the flick. Why? Because you move so fast, or you are so powerful, that whenever you flick, you basically just move the air at hurricane speeds. Or tornado speeds, if you want to call it whatever. At G4 strength, let's say. Humans will immediately die. That's for sure. And and see, this is the problem that I have with 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 Vampire the Masquerade going to that level. Because in Mage, you, you need you, I, if I recall correctly, you need to you need to believe on that in order for for their skills or magic to work. With the Fallen, you just don't give a fuck. You just use them. And even level one. Um, it's not disciplines, it's just lore, I think it's called. Level 1 lore is very broken. That's the reason why you don't fight in Demon of the Fallen. Or at least that's what I will say. Fighting in Demon of the Fallen, it's a stupid mess. You don't do it. Because it, you're gonna break stuff. In Vampire, when you start going above the stupidity, the stupidity barrier, or the barrier of stupidity, Fights are gonna be very stupid. Really. Flicker, come on. Impress on steel. You you you're so strong in, in potence that you get to like like impress your, your, your hand on steel like as if it was clay and and presence level ten, you change the world to your liking and obfuscate level ten, no one knows that you exist. Permanently, which is what Absolute Lunar does. Sorry for spoiling that. Um, and so on, and so forth. I mean, it's just wow. It, it's it's so excessive for fucking vampires to be able to do some of the stuff that I'm like, I could understand it from demons. I could understand it from mages, even from raids. But from vampires, really? That's why they. That's why they basically killed the old world of darkness and made the new world of darkness but it was it was so watered down and people were complaining all the fucking time and I understand it it makes sense because of how broken it was even though they changed it even though they changed it so many times now in the old world of darkness because they have to return it because people didn't like the new one oh this werewolf was okay or, or great from what I've heard. A lot of people do, do compliment Werewolf. That it was great. Uh, the version of Fallen for new one, I, I didn't like it. It's the, the mechanicist thing that's going around there. No, just just no. And and vampires just... It killed the whole vibe. It just killed the whole vibe about the game. That's the thing. That, 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 that there's this vibe in, in the old world. Like this vampire 
the masquerade that is just so great about it. The lore, um, the story, the characters. Again, even if I complain about the mechanics, the story is just great. And what most people most players fail to identify is that the whole thing behind Vampire is redemption. Redeeming yourself from being a fucking monster. That's why humanity is your stat. That's why in Fallen you have torment because you have been tormented in the abyss for what you did against God because you rebelled, because you killed. And spoiler, well not spoiler, but just to mention something. Cain is the reason why the Fallen and Angels learned to kill because before that they didn't do that. They had fights where they will illuminate the entire horizon with beautiful constructions and they will change mountains and forests and lakes and they will create new creatures and they will just bring beautiful life into everything. And it's this fucking sin of Cain that has brought everything in the world crashing down mages are descendants of the original humans that the fallen taught but it's because of the fall that everything has happened and raids is just a horrible consequence that the fallen have to deal with because in the abyss they can hear the humans suffering because they will guide them and, and it hurts them. This is one of the reasons why they are tormented because they can hear all humans crossing near them and they cannot save them and it drives them fucking crazy. That's why some fallen have higher torment than others. Because they are tormented by this, by, the, by this huge sin that they cannot help humanity because that's all what they wanted to do. They wanted to save humans. They wanted to teach them the beauty of, of, of the dawn that came to them. They wanted to teach them how beautiful a mountain was, how beautiful the sound of a valley sounded as, as, the, as the wind blew through it. Music, art, pictures, that's what the Fallen wanted to teach humanity. And it is through the sin of Cain that it all comes crumbling down and this is where we are today. This is why it's called the World of Darkness. Because of all the shit that has happened. Kinda sad. But this is the reality that the world of darkness goes around. Cain is the progenitor not of only of the kindred. He is the progenitor of the fallen as they are. Of Wraith. Chainling, not really, but it's related to Lilith. So, it, it kinda is. Mummies is just a different story that has nothing to do with it. Even though it's connected to Set and, and other stuff and whatnot, I'm, I'm digressing here. I'm, I mean, I'm just going around. Um, the Garou. I have a huge fucking problem with Kane and the Kindred. Not so much with the Fallen as, as it is with the Kindred, because the Kindred are just unfucking natural. And they are. Because in the end, Kane was punished by three angels. And. The punishment of all kindred is that they must drink blood. They cannot go out of the sun, on the sun. And there was a third one. I always forget the third one. But there is a rumor, and I'm gonna. I know I'm going really off topic here, but it's just a lot of lore that that needs to be explained because this is never gonna be explained in this game. And and it gives you so much more juice in the game, and it makes it so much more enjoyable if you understand all of this. And, and it is that Cain was visited by a fourth angel that said, Do you want to be redeemed? And and if you do, there is a way that you can take and you can do and, and this and that. And Cain said, Wow, so, so there is a possibility. Yes, there is a possibility. God doesn't fucking hate you. It's just that you need to understand that there is a way that you can do and, and for you to redeem yourself. And that is Golconda. Golconda is the path where you can not only control the beast, which is, uh, um, there's a clan called the Salubri. It's not part of the original 13 clans, but Salubri is the master of Golconda. And Golconda basically is a path that will, you need to have Humanity 10 to begin with. This is, this is unavoidable. You need to have Pet 10, or Level 10, I'm sorry. 
You need to follow the path of Golconda, I believe it is. And only people that know Golconda can actually do this. It's, there's no other way around. So you need to be taught by someone that knows Golconda. You just can't pick up, oh, I'm just gonna pick up Discipline Golconda. No, you can't. This needs to be taught. And this is something that's also not explained in this game. The reason why you can pick up disciplines where you can improve them is because someone else is teaching you or you, the potence in your blood is in a way allowing you. So, as a, a, as a storyteller, which I would say is the correct name for World of Darkness, which would be the equivalent of a Dungeon Master for Dungeons and Dragons or a Lord Keeper for Call of Cthulhu, you need to take consideration of how you're going to work this out. Because just giving your player X discipline and X level doesn't make sense. In some cases it doesn't, in some cases it does. You need to consider this when you're doing it. Anyway, Golconda, um, Golconda will teach you the way of redemption, but, but the only way to improve in the way of Golconda, if I recall correctly, you have to diablerize your, your teacher, your master, your sire. It's the only way that you can go up. And this is very sad because there's only a limited amount of salubri in the world, or people that know Golconda, or Kendra that know Golconda, whatever. And this is fucking hard. Using Golconda. But there is a very huge backdrop here. And I can't say it because that... Or, or I could, rather, I could. I know that this is also a huge spoiler, but salubri is seen as the example of redemption, that he will become human again when the time comes and whatnot. But Salubri is the one that's behind all the craziest and most evil fucking twisted shit in the world of darkness. Salubri is, is basically the antithesis to Lucifer. And you may say, what? How the fuck is he the antithesis to Lucifer? Lucifer in this in the world of darkness is, is seen... <sighs> you can understand it through different ways, through different prisons, if you like. Because Lucifer, for, for the Fallen, can be seen as, as the savior, as the one that has brought humanity to to a better life, or whatnot. Some others will say that Lucifer committed a huge sin and, and condemned him, and whatnot, and humans can see Lucifer as the corrupter, and, and kindred don't see anything because they don't talk about Lucifer. But the thing is that Lucifer, in Gehenna, and in the end of times for the fallen which i can't recall right now what it's called because it's it's in a compilation book that has fallen and other things there if i recall correctly the point is lucifer was was not seen when when they were all taken to the abyss and the reason behind this is because god knew that lucifer would rebel i was obvious god, god is god i mean come on god is a woman by the way so so explains one of the fallen God is a woman, and 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 it's not this bearded old man. That doesn't make fucking sense. Only a woman could create something so beautiful. That's what the Fallen say. And, and I would personally agree with that. Only a woman could create something so beautiful and love it. And let it grow in the way it did. Organically. Because it was the only way that they could grow. Everyone. Anyway, so Lucifer is not bad. Lucifer is an agent of God. And, and a lot of Fallen resent that when they find out they're like, Lucifer, you're here in Earth? Yes, I'm here. And my punishment is being here and, and acting as the agent of God and doing what I have to do. And uh, the Fallen's are fucking pissed at this. Because he was punished in a different way. Some understand what, what happened here. But anyway, so Lucifer is trying to get things in a way straightened out because he is the defender of humanity. Honestly, just look at it. He, he tried to defend humanity and, and and do a lot of stuff for humanity, and and then comes Salubri and do, does all this fucked up shit. And even the Kindra are like, wow, really? I think even Lucifer is like, wow, you're a piece of shit. But Salubri get, gets what's coming to him, just like the followers of Set. Followers of Set get what the fuck is coming to them, and so are the Giovanni, because the Giovanni are fucking with the dead, not not. Not figuratively, like literally, they're fucking with dead. And when the what's it called? The I always forget the name of the thing that separates the spirit world and the abyss and all that. Uh, the maelstrom. When the maelstrom comes and everything is just starts mixing up again, Brits come and fuck the Japanese so bad. 
because they have it coming. Fucking with the dead. And this is a consequence of the Cappadocians. This is a consequence, and they're paying for it because they're greedy motherfuckers. I, I couldn't enjoy that ending more. Same for the followers of Set, but I enjoy the Giovanni more than the followers of Set. The followers of Set are just dumbasses. The Giovanni are just greedy motherfuckers. Um, anyway, so going back to Golconda and, and saving yourself. It is possible to save yourself. There are some characters that actually managed to save themselves, and here's an interesting thing. Um, Kindred cannot go into Consecrated Ground. What is a Consecrated Ground? Consecrated Ground is a place that is, um, I, I'm not going to say holy enough, but there is a presence of a believer, a true believer. A true believer is someone that does believe in God. And true belief is linked to faith, and faith is also linked to the Fallen, which is the equivalent of blood for the Fallen. So... I explain this. So basically, someone that has true belief in God or in something, I can't recall if it has to be specifically in God, but something. And, and here's an example because I, I remember hearing this from the Tijuana RPG crew. You have a priest and you have a church. The church is consecrated ground, so you can't go in, or you maybe you can, but you're gonna get aggravated damage, or maybe you can survive, who knows. But the priest doesn't have any true fate, so you can kill the priest without consequence. Now, in comes Mary. Mary is just a normal human. But you are suddenly filled with horrible dread, and you can't get around her in a certain perimeter because apparently she has true fate. And if she has true fate and you touch her as a kindred, you're gonna get burnt. You're gonna get aggra aggravated damage. This is interesting, this is a very interesting mechanic, because as a kindred, if you reach Kalkonda, you eventually reach true fate. And now, other kindred can't touch you, and other creatures also can't touch you because you have true fate. And this is because you're following the path of Kalkonda and you're seeking redemption, and to me this is very important. Very, very important, because that, that teaches me that there is a way for kindred to redeem themselves. And that's why I love the Nosfi, because the Nosfi, the, the, the Dark Ages Nosfis, believe this to be the right way, that the believing in God could be redemption, could, they could actually be saved. They were obviously not looked kindly by the rest, but some, some of them had true fate and could be redeemed. Not necessarily by the path of Uganda, but you could still be redeemed. It's, it's two different things, but they take the same way. And this this has a, this this brings an interesting theory that I, that I once used. If the kindred can have true fate, because obviously they are they were human, and now they're as human as they can be. They could potentially feed a fallen. They could live in a fallen and still have true fate. If if my theory worked right, I, I may be wrong here. So I used it and said, "Do you believe in X Y C?" fallen, because we have seen his power and whatnot, the glory of his power, or its power rather, not his or her, because that doesn't make sense, um, demons, fallen, don't have, you can use sex to define them like he or she, but it doesn't make sense, it, it, it doesn't, it, it, it's pointless, it's just it, and you could potentially feed the, the faith. Of a fallen, and that's very important because the fallen could protect you, and you could protect the fallen, and still earn your your path to redemption. Very fucking trippy, and and I really really like to think of that when when I when I play or master a, a game of vampire or demon, mostly demon. I I I I, I do f I do vampire the masquerade. But I personally like Demon the more than Bumper. Anyway, after this long chat, rant or monologue or whatever you want to call it, let's go back to the game, which is what we were doing in the first place. It's more than that, you 
Most kids would think it's one of the signs of the end, the apocalypse. Every religion has their own version of it. Kindred call it Gehenna, and the way they tell it, it starts when the ancients rise to devour their children. No one knows for sure, really. That's just a word that's been handed down through the ages. The Camarilla denies these ancients exist. Well, Kel, I guess you're gonna be the one to find out. <laughs> hey, good luck. Try not to wake Grandpa Munster and kill the world, huh? <laughs> yeah, right. You never thought you'd make it back. If nines didn't stand up for you in the courtroom, you were gonna toast right there. Obviously. Everybody knows that. Camera doesn't give a fuck. It's bullshit, camera law. You gotta get it approved before you sire anyone. Vampire population control, fascist crap. LaCroix wanted to look like the strong leader upholding the law. Yeah, right, and. and... But there's there's actually a good reason behind it. You, you, you just kind of have way too many kindred because otherwise you start getting hunted. And this this happened in the Dark Ages in the what's it called uh, in Wallachia, Transylvania, and the Balkans in general. And well, that's why you have Vlad Tepes, which Vlad Tepes is actually a kindred. And you can read the stats somewhere in the most wanted and whatnot. It's, 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 it's interesting. I can't recall what clan he is. I, I think he's a Simisi, maybe, probably. All Simisi, whatever. You might want to look that up. I can't recall right now. Public relations, man. Calculated risk. Vents were born in importance. When Nines called him out, McCoy realized it was time to show a carefully measured dose of Camarilla compassion. Yeah, go fuck yourself. Yeah, man, it's called kicking ass and crushing the skulls of any asshole who steps on my toes. That seems to work. People dig it. LaCroix is the boss of Camarilla in L.A. That's it. <laughs> LaCroix is the boss. <laughs> That's rich. The free living dead, kiddo. A lot of people like to use the label Anarchs. Well, that's me. Anarchs. Look at that kick them, though, huh? There's also another funny story, and I think, I think, I think it's gonna mention it. I think Jack is gonna talk about it if I ask about the Anarchs. But this is the second Anarch Rebellion. There was another one in the the Dark Ages, if I recall correctly, and it was a whole fucking mess. It's a whole mess, and it didn't work as intended, but it set up a precedent, and. If I recall correctly, the first Anarch Rebellion is one of the things that unchains, not unchains, it, it, it or, or rather it, it creates a, a chain reaction, that's what I'm trying to say, on how the Camarilla and the Sabbat are made. I can't recall which is made first though, I think it's the Sabbat. The Sabbat is made in Spain by... Uh, Lu Lucita is one of the Lucita is one, is one of the the progenitors of the Sabbat. Lucita is, is a very powerful Asombra from Spain, and in Spain is where the the base of the Sabbat is. Mexico City is the largest, I would say, largest concentration of the Sabbat that is in the world, and is used as their second base of operation or the first base of operation. I can't recall right now. That's why that's why Latin America is just basically infested with the Sabbat. Same for Spain. So, whatever in in, in theory, whatever the Spanish Empire control at one point is where the Sabbat are, and the rest of the world in theory is Camarilla, kinda maybe. Important to note though, cities are controlled by either the Sabbat or Camarilla, and Camarilla consider that anything that's outside of that territory, even though they say that they control, for example, the United States, right? Which is not true because there's there's also the Giovanni. The Giovanni just control themselves and they, they, they have different rules and, and whatnot, whatever. And Venice is just its own thing that's controlled by the Giovanni, I think. I, I don't recall. Anyway, anything that's not a city or a major town or whatever 
It's basically anarch territory, so there's no control there, there's no law. Even though it should be uphold, uh, there's not. Anyway. That's us, so told. What do you want to know? Yeah, I could tell you about the history of the movement about our struggle. <laughs> What's any of that shit mean anyway? Do we want to sit through history class here? I'm no scholar, kid, but I've been around. Seen more and done more than most vampires ever will. I don't know that our situation's ever gonna be easy, but some things you gotta decide are worth fighting for. Fight harder than the other son of a bitch. Every time I yank a jawbone from a skull and ram it in an eye socket, I know I'm building a better future. <laughs> eh, kinda. You bet, kid. As much as anyone is. Nines is a stand up guy, takes the politics a little too seriously, though. Came up during the Great Depression, so he's brain wired to that shit. Yeah, I'm not sure the story on most of them. Nines grew. Bruja. Most everyone here has Bruja blood. Well, well, I call him Bruja. Um, maybe right either way. Interesting thing about the Bruja is that they are leaders. That's why they have a problem with the Ventral. They are rebellious in nature. They are... <sighs> Example. When the Roman Republic existed, it was controlled by Ventral. This is obvious. And this is one of the few things that I did like about the, the New World Darkness when they spoke about that whole thing. Very tough. I, I do, I do, like, I did like the whole mechanic and how it worked. Um... But... Ventral were... The Roman Republic and the Roman Empire eventually. Carthage, the Carthaginian Empire, was the Bruja. So you can understand that this has been going on for quite a while. This is not anything new. And that's why they. they that's one of the reasons that they oppose the Ventru. The Bruja see the Ventru as cocky. cocky motherfuckers. And the Ventru see the Bruja as just. Uncontrolled rabble. They have different opinions, basically. But they 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 both buy for control. The thing is that the Bruja are not like the Toriador or the Bento in the Camarilla. They were not founding members. And, and there's an important founding member in the Camarilla who basically with with a speech if and, and I think it's Toriador basically created the laws of the Camarilla. Which have never been explained here completely. There's ten rules, I believe. But that's. I, I'm, I'm getting. I'm just moving way too deep into the lore now. Moving right I already did. The Savannah worthless, man. Fake tits on a zombie worthless. Quite a lot, though. Like the three stooges with chainsaws. Yeah, they're opposing Cable Willow, but they suck when it comes to execution. Eh, yeah, kinda. The Sabat are in the same business as the Camarilla. Sabat had a little longer chain, but they're slaves all the same. Moving right along. What's on your mind? See. What about them? Do well, I think of humans? I don't, really. When you were alive, did you think about cows? <laughs> you know, one got killed, I bet you cry, but you know, you're not out there slaughtering. Yeah, and, and this is something that, that most kindred think. Like, they don't give a shit about men, and they should. Like, honestly, they should. But that's the way the cookie crumbles. I think. Okay, let's get the fuck out of here. So that's that's an interesting story. Okay, you have to remind us about assault. Okay, you had for beginners. Ah, the Ehad. The Ehad. That's a very deadly word. I'm not gonna get demonetized by it, but maybe I am. I don't care. In Bumper the Masquerade. And this is a funny story too. Jihad is the war between all the old vampires. 
old kindred, whatever. Originally, the the card game was called Jihad, the Eternal Struggle. Was it? Jihad or no? It's Bamber, the Eternal Struggle, and then there's it's Jihad something. The thing is that they, they had to change the name because Jihad is, you know, Jihad is, is a holy Muslim war. Or in a way, it's a holy Muslim war. It doesn't really mean that. There's a lot of misunderstanding on what Jihad means, and Uyahadin is a holy warrior. But Jihad means, it has different connotations than what we in the West understand. Um, I, I, will have to, I will have to do a whole history lesson. And I have to reread because I remember reading about it and, and, and when I first read about it, and I'm like, okay, that makes sense. But still, they had to remove it. So basically, you have for beginners is this is how the world goes. This is what happens. There's someone higher than me, someone that will fuck me up, and I need someone that can help me or someone below me that can help me. So this huge pyramid scheme structure that Nines talked about, this is what the jihad is. This is what it's called, the jihad. So there's the Antediluvians, and there's the Methuselahs, the Methuselahs are the four generations, and there's fifth, sixth, seventh, so on and so forth, all the way back down. And it's not just about generation, what we're talking about here, it's about age, it's about kindred that have lived thousands of years, because the Antediluvians existed when the first city existed, when Enoch existed, which is basically erased memory time, but not but Enoch does exist in the Shadow Realm. That's what it's called. Just remember that the Shadow Realm is where the Braids are. And that's where it exists in the Shadow Realm. Enoch. And in Enoch, there are sarcophagus that the Sabbat keep. Am I spoiling you too much? Maybe I am, but I like talking about the Lord. And the true Black Hand. The Black Hand is the. I wouldn't call it a secret service, but it's kind of like the Justicars and whatnot that the Camarilla have. They do the dirty work. The true Black Hand, on the other hand, is the one that's behind the scenes, controlling everything. Now, the important thing here is that the true Black Hand lives in the Shadow World, not in astral form, because you may think, are we talking about astral traveling and whatnot, which some kindred can do and some other creatures can do too. No, we're talking about that they live there physically. That's where they are, and they are three or five sarcophagus I can remember and some of them have the names of antediluvians and some other names that we don't know about. We don't know if maybe there are more antediluvians that we and that we think there are, like there are 13 antediluvians and maybe there's 15, 20, 30, 50, 100. We don't know that. We don't know if maybe Cain created more kindred than originally thought that there were only three and I can remember that one of them was called Sila. I can recall if Sila was the, um, what's it called? If Sila was king, maybe not. Can recall, but Enoch, Enoch is based on the name of one of the children of Cain, or it was made in his honor. Because if you may know this or not, but it's to call the Book of Nod, not the Book of Cain. What the fuck am I talking about? The Book of Nod is where all this knowledge about Cain is stored in Enoch and blah 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 and whatnot. And Cain. Rome not. Found Lilith, got his power and whatnot. Not in Hebrew, I believe, or Aramaic, I can't recall, means nothing. So when Adam and Eve were cast away into not, they were cast away into the land of nothing because it was a desert, an arid land. They had everything in paradise and then they were sent here, but um, it's different. Once you read all the lore, how it's how, it, how it's explained. Anyway, and there's there's an interesting story about how Lucifer fought uh, Michael the Archangel. Lucifer used to brandish a, this flaming sword, and then Michael was given the sword, but he didn't know how to use it, so he couldn't find fight Lucifer, who didn't have a weapon, so it wasn't even fight something like that. Very trippy stuff. It to be the way that they that they went through the Torah, and the, and the Quran, and uh, the Bible, and then the esoteric knowledge, because they, they went very deep into Kabbalistic knowledge, and beautiful, absolutely beautiful, how the, how they made it. Once once you know all this stuff, you really learn to appreciate the entire world of us. It's, it's great stuff. They they really took their time to build it. 
Um, so what the fuck was I talking about? <laughs> um, crap. Oh yeah. And up and whatnot. So, um, when Rapnos gets killed, um, there's basically Rapnos is killed basically by a nuclear explosion, and this has repercussions on the Shadow World. One of them being that Enoch is destroyed. The true Black Hand, in a way, is destroyed by this. Or most of it. The sarcophagus, gone completely. We're never gonna know what, what's in them. And... There's other horrible consequences to that, because Rapnos was connected to the Shadow Realm and blah blah blah. Anyway. Let's continue with our story, because I just keep drifting on and on and on about the lore, and... This could be the never-ending story. Show. Uh, I'm to see it, uh, yeah, I don't know if I want to. I don't know if I want to do that yet. No. No, I'm not gonna be able to talk with them. Um, with the homeless. Or maybe I will, I don't know. I don't recall what this is. Uh, okay. What the hell is this? Oh, okay. That's another way to go up. Never mind. Hmm. What do I have to do here? I know I need to do something here. Not sure what. Hmm. Let's see. what I have to do here. Okay, I'll, I'll just... Oh! Ooh, fire! Get away from me. I have to do something here. I, I don't know what it is, but I, I, I'm gonna have to get back there. Let's see... Nope, that's not the one. Let's see if the map says what it is, because I can recall can't recall what mission I have to do, and I might have to go into the uh, Love Confession, I think it's called. <laughs> Let's see, where am I? You are here. The last round. Nope, doesn't say what it is. Ah, so I have to go up to Love Confession 5, up to D. Someone's house. F. CDF. E. Give me the blood. One of the things that I do appreciate about. There's, there's just mod. There, there's a great mod. Again, I didn't do the mod because I just want to play the game as it is. There's some mod that makes a lot of changes. You can play a lot of clans also, including the La Sombra, and I think it's amazing. I, I don't recall, I may be wrong on that, but one of the mechanics that they had was that your blood would drain with time. That's a great mechanic, because every day that you, or every night that you awake, you lose one point of blood. And this is important because you consume blood to continue to exist, basically. That is your punishment, and that's... Oh, wait a moment. Where the hell am I? What? What the fuck? Where am I? Ah, where is this? I don't know where I am. Oh no. Don't get stuck, please. Speaking of which, I'm just gonna save here. Where the hell am I? Sky 
Oh, Skyline Apartments. Oh, where could be? I even remember this. Skill too low. Okay. We can fix that. Enough, apparently. Okay. He's so odd. Something original. Ah, okay. Slow, he never really has chips or something. Ah, okay. Watch uh, the switch price pretty hot on the password on her door. 9648. Nice. Still some bad instruction. <laughs> Other fucking creepy motherfucker. Make an reason to keep an eye on this one. Maybe there it is. Well, Anderson, I thought there was no reason to watch him, and then I caught him upstairs. So I keep the tape rolling. I glass her the whole mind. Something hot is always going in here, and that's something that's usually had on herself. Okay. Hmm. Where's the password for this? Pretty sure the password is somewhere here. Not sure. Ah, yes, you can go into every room. There we go. Brown salt. Okay, so... Wait a moment. There's... which is the one... Hold up, no, downtown. A. I don't think it's this one. Or maybe not, but I'm gonna check because there's some stuff that I'll be able to find here. Nope. Nothing here. Nothing here, apparently. You know what? I'm gonna keep saving here because I can recall if something fishy is gonna happen. I need to keep an eye out. Ooh, what is this? Photo. Oh, oh, oh. Looks like me. Oh. Ah, uh, not gonna work, right? Show 17. That's probably the haunted areas. This is very spooky. Middle work requires. This scary skill will say it's the ghost of a nurse who failed. Okay. They're all wrestlers. Actors more than just their careers again. Ah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, this guy's just... Yeah, this guy's just making shit up. There's a lot of painkillers, yo. A lot of painkillers. In your fucking toilet, oh my god. That's... okay. I don't know what's up with that. I can't read that. Uh, what am I... Check something up. Hacking. Computer. Six. Crap. Need to go up. Go up, up, up. Okay. So, nothing here. Let's see the next one. 
Curtis. Mr. Melton, you know who this is, and I do hope you realize that we're still on for tonight. Meet me at the agreed upon location across from the bar by the underpass. Bring your associate, Mr. Durbin, as it is a two man job that I am proposing. With any luck, the two of you are already on your way, and I shall see you soon. Goodbye. Students. Interesting. What is this? Research. Okay. Research level five. Jesus. Wow. Okay. Uh, that's not gonna work in the short run. But Jesus. That's uh, gnarly. Very gnarly. Oh, I think that's it. I think that's all I need to get from here. From the underpass. I'm not sure. But there's something that I need to find here. Can not recall what it is? That's gonna be something spoopy. Or maybe not. Uh, honestly, I can't remember. There, there's something that we need to find in this this apartment. Ah, damn it! Too low. Doesn't raise wits. So. Damn it. Ooh, fancy computer. Or kind of fancy. Ooh. Okay. So should give me the option to actually try and unlock it. Even if I don't know the password. Maybe I already knew the password. Who knows? Okay, so never mind that. There's nothing here. At least I... Ah, okay. Ah, yeah, it's the one that says that there's nothing there. Okay. Never mind that. Hello? Oh my. Oh, crap. Oh, shit. Um, okay. Hi, Paul. It's Hannah. Just calling to see how you are. I hope I didn't give you what I've got. Ugh, I feel like crap. Alright man, so sorry for you. Let's see, ooh, so tacky. Let's see, wait what? Ah, what's the door? I thought I, I, I thought it was something else, apparently not. Or was it though? No, oh, apparently it was the door. Look at all 
let's go through here. Ah, I think we're gonna need the password. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. okay. That's that's fine. Mm, there's something that we have to pick up. Okie dokie. So let's see. Okay, we go through here. Fix this. Go up. Are you coming up? I think it is. Wow. Wow. So I don't know what 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 was it? But I, I messed it up the first time, so no easy piece for me. Okay, hello. Oh my god, don't forget about those. That, that TV screen is huge. Uh, okay, two bedrooms in, a, in an apartment. Wow, that's holy shit. That's I would I would pay for that honestly. Wow. Nothing here. What day it is? I'm a kindred. I don't care. Well, I think I got sick from one of my <laughs> clients. I was feeling fine until I, I, uh, I saw her a few days ago. She was just a woman who called. She, uh, she found my ad in the newspaper. <laughs> Usually, only do business with referrals, you know, but she was offered a lot of money. Her name was Jezebel. Jezebel Locke. Oh, really? Okay. Names, you know, but hers was so wow. strange. I can't seem to get it out of my head. I think I was I was hearing about this that the name Jezebel is supposed to be like a an impotent woman or, or a woman that's does things that shouldn't be doing a Okay, fine. Tell you the truth, I don't really remember a whole lot about that night, you know. <laughs> Everything's a little blurry, you know. I mean, I'm not usually, you know, into women, but I remember feeling so attracted to her. I thought she was the most beautiful woman I'd ever seen. <laughs> and the next thing that clicked <laughs> when I woke up the next morning, <laughs> and I haven't been feeling too well since then. The truth. These are the friends who, who've uh, worked with her, and they're not doing so hot either, you know? <laughs> she had a room at the Empire Hotel. I can't remember the number. <laughs> hey, are you sure that Paul's okay? He's not sick, is he? <laughs> Good. He's a nice guy. <laughs> it doesn't matter, Hannah, you're also dead. Honestly. I hope so. I really do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's see because I'm pretty sure. We're in the direction we want to look possible links and the plague. Yeah. What a book. Okay. 
Low torch. Ooh. Okay. <sighs> Alright. Okie dokie. So, let's get the hell out of here. We can go through the main door. Definitely can. Fastest elevator ever. Yeah, I'm not gonna jump like stupid. Because that's gonna do a lot of damage and I don't wanna deal with that. here. The Plague Bear chain quest is very interesting. Gives you a lot of insight on a, on a very deadly pin. I, I don't like I don't like the Bali. Especially because they also deal with the with the Fallen. And just as a note, before Fallen even the Fallen existed, um, there was a disclaimer on the book. Because apparently White Wolf had a lot of issues. And I said that they did not condone or in any way, shape, or form uh, were in favor of Satanism, Luciferianism, or whatever, because people were using this uh, apparently for that. And they removed all references to the kindred doing that and whatnot, so it's the 90s, kid. It used to be more edgy back then, so in a way, I understand. I actually would like to buy or find. If any of you know someone, I will be very interested in getting a copy of the original Vampire the Masquerade um, Core Edition. Or not Core Edition, it's just Vampire the Masquerade, the, the original manual. Because I'm very intrigued to read what they're talking about. I, I've never read any anything below 2nd edition. I, I played 3rd, 2nd, 20th. And I think in second edition they also mentioned that they removed it, and or or that there was minimal reference and they removed it completely from third, and, and that's from second. So a little bit intrigued by that. Anyway, so that's it for this episode. Hope you have enjoyed it. I I talk way too much in this game because I really love it. It's it's a complaint that I had in other games that I don't talk too much, and uh, well for this one you. Probably you're not going to hear me stop anytime soon, because I do have a lot of stuff to talk about here. And if you have comments or questions in regards to lore, I'll try and answer. You can leave them down in the comment section below. And if I don't know it, I'll point you in the right way, because I, I, I don't want to mess up the lore. It's already messed up a lot. And if you haven't done so, remember like, share, and subscribe. Thank you very much for tuning in. Watch out for the play kids. It's not nice. And I'm going to check out what that guy is doing outside my window because apparently they are installing something and I'm hopeful that they're installing fiber optics because I really need it. So thank you and have a good one.